All right, so let me do this and the next uh, three questions, four questions total together, because they are kind of in the same um, topic area, then, and they will all be using the similar kind of formula. So they all deal with the double slit interference, and just so that um, I'm not just <laughs> appealing to uh, unproven formulas, um, the hint does uh, refer to the the textbook sections that cover this, which covers the double slit interference formulas. And there's two kind of easy formulas to memorize and just have ready. Uh, one that describes the locations of constructive interference, uh, which would be given by this equation. This is the way I have it memorized. D is the separation between the two slits times the sine of the angle. This is the angular position in the direction that the, uh, the, the light is going in. It, it could be related to like a positions on a screen. Uh, that's equal to some integer times wavelength, where m is um, starts from 0, plus minus 1, and so on. And uh, I'm not quite sure if we will need the destructive interference formulas, but uh, if we do, then it starts out the same. The left-hand side is related to a path length difference. So that's why it's the same. On the right-hand side, instead of the path length difference being an integer difference, it'll now be a half integer difference. So um, m is the, still the same. Um, can be at zero, I think, zero, and then plus minus one, and so on. Um, so because um, We'll be using these formulas. Oh, and uh, and with uh, these formulas, <laughs> um, I recommend that you understand where they come from and where they come from and where the derivations are done are the textbook sections. So if you look at section one, I think that'll just uh, uh, describe qualitatively. I don't think they quite give you the formulas. Let's see. Yeah, they're. Describing qualitatively something about the path length difference, but they quite don't finish it. In 3.2 is where they actually do drive uh, using the you know path length difference and all that. Yeah. So, so do take a look at those sections and make sure you understand where these formulas come from. For the purpose of our exercise here, we can just write the formulas and use them. So the question asks, what is the wavelength of light falling on double slit separated by, let me just sketch it out so that I may have a kind of mental image in my head. So we have a double slit that's separated by some distance d. And um, I guess right now the uh, question is describing, there is, uh, you are looking at a particular direction. Uh, okay, my drawing's not gonna be to scale, but this will be theta. And they gave us theta of 59 degrees. And they are telling us uh, this gives the third order maximum. So this is where uh, maximum with m equals three. The central maximum doesn't have an order. So, you know, when you look at the interference pattern over here, it looks like a central maximum. And then this is what they would call first order, and then second order, and then third order. So first order, second order, and then third order. So that's what they are looking at. So this central corresponds to m equals zero, and then is m equals, let's say this is plus one, then uh, this is minus one, and so on. So I think we can set up the equation. We are looking for the wavelength and we are using constructive interference. So let me write down. Um, so d sine theta, let me plug in the value of m, three times lambda. So solving this for wavelength, we get wavelength lambda is equal to d times sine theta over three. And I think we can just plug in the numbers. Um, in all from alpha, we'll say d separation is 2.5 uh, micrometer or micron. Uh, hopefully you are familiar with all these uh, metric prefixes, as you should be, <laughs> times the sine of 59 degrees, divided by uh, third order three. So that'll give me, uh, me some answer. I'm mindful that we are answering in nanometers. So 
it's gonna be 7 14 nanometers yeah, I guess that's a pretty narrow uh, spacing, I think. Uh, almost like uh, that would be for uh, diffraction grading. Okay, let's look at the next question. And some of the questions will require slightly more work. So it says, in a double slit experiment, again, double slit, the fifth maximum is, okay, so let's just uh, ch start changing some of the stuff. Maximum with, so it says the fifth maximum, so it's going to be uh, m equals 5. Again, the central maximum starts at you know 0. Uh, so there's a 0th maximum. <laughs> m equals 5. And then, uh, uh, interesting. So they're not giving us an angle this time. Instead, what they're doing is they're giving us uh, the information with which we can figure out the angle. So. Uh, what they've said was, let's just uh, redraw. Uh, do I need to redraw it? Let's not redraw the whole thing because it's a lot of work. But we'll just say, okay, we are looking at a screen over here with a bunch of um, interference uh, pattern. And what we've been told is that let's say there's one particular point where that's where the fifth maximum is. And they've told us that uh, from the central maximum, this distance is 2.5 centimeter. And then they've said that this distance from the slit to the screen is 1.3 meters. So this is what you have to imagine. You have to imagine uh, this particular right triangle. This right triangle, surface normal to the screen, right angle, going here, the opposite side of the leg, and the hypotenuse, and this is the angle theta in the formula for the constructive and destructive interference. So imagining the right triangle, so what you have been given is, you have been given the, uh, you have been given the adjacent side, 1.3 meters here, you've been given the opposite side, so you can write down for theta, that tangent theta is equal to the opposite, 2.5 centimeter, over the adjacent, 1.3 meters. And um, I guess for the purpose of this question, because um, you basically need to take an arc tangent of this and then put it into uh, sine theta, um, you can derive algebraic expression by, um, by doing what's called drawing the triangle. But um, strictly speaking, it's not necessary. So let me just uh, do it without drawing the triangle. I'll just uh, lean on the calculator. So uh, this time, d sine theta is equal to 5 for the fifth maximum. And lambda, which is what I'm looking for, is equal to d sine theta. And for this theta, we will use arc tangent of 2.5 centimeter over 1.3 meter. Uh, I'm relying on O from alpha to do the unit conversion for me. And on the denominator, this is going to be 5. So let's plug that in, see what kind of answer we get, and then go from there. A D, uh, that would be, oh, were we given the D? Ah, yeah, yeah. If the slits are 0 0.15 millimeter apart. So D is a 0 0.15 millimeter. Again, if I weren't using all from alpha, I would convert all these numbers to basic SI units. That times the sine of the angle. Um, so arc tangent of 2.5 centimeter divided by 1.3 meter. Um, that's the numerator. Denominator is 5. So when you put that in, it should give me us an answer. And if nanometer is reasonable, yeah, for some of, yeah, so... Um, since we are answering in nanometers, we should say 580 nanometers. Pretty simple. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, if you draw the triangle, that involves a little more technique, mathematical trick, but strictly speaking, not necessary. Um, yeah, it's, you know, easy enough. Keep it easy. Okay, so next question. It says, if a uh, uh, two different wavelengths of light illuminate two slits that are separated by, okay, we are given D again, 0 0.5 millimeters. How far apart are the second order maxima for these two wavelengths on a screen 2.4 meter away? Oh, 
All right. Um, so I think I can keep a lot of this uh, setup. Let me just uh, erase and switch up some of this around. So we are still being told the distance to the screen, which would be um, 2.4 meters. Now, yeah, let me erase other things that might be confusing. And then we are not given the angle or being asked for the angle. Instead, what we are being asked about is the um, how far are the second order maxima part of. So what this looks like is, imagine, so I'm going to first to draw the interference pattern in green. Uh, green or blue for 464 nanometer. So that would be one interference pattern. So minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum. Okay, that's the second order. Um, same deal here, minimum and then maximum, minimum, the maximum, that's the second order. And so I think I have to erase a few more things. I don't, I'm not using this. Okay, close enough. <laughs> So what we are being told is, or what we are being asked for, is how far apart are the second order maxima. So I drew the interference pattern for blue light, and they also told us about a red light that's illuminating it. So I have to imagine that interference pattern for the red light. Uh, let me do it with the magenta because that's going to be more visible. Because it's a longer wavelength, the pattern will be more spread out. So let me try to draw it that way. It'll go minimum here, and then maximum here, minimum here, and then maximum here, and so on. So minimum here, maximum, minimum, and so on. So what the question is asking about is for the first, second order, it's asking for what is this difference, delta y. And um, I feel that it's going to be a little bit uh, smoother if I uh, broke apart the problem this way. Instead of trying to calculate the delta y right away, let's do it this way. Uh, I'm going to calculate the position y1 for the second order maximum for the shorter wavelength, 464 nanometer, and label this uh, y2 for the second order um, uh, interference, second order maximum uh, for the, the longer wavelength. And what I'll have is I'll have an expression for y1, expression for y2, and then delta y will just be the larger number y2 minus the smaller number y1. So um, I think once you have a theta, then both y1 and y2 are pretty simple to express. You just have to think about the same right triangle that I was pointing out earlier. So you are given the adjacent side. You're look, trying to look for the opposite side. So if I do adjacent side times tangent of the angle, uh, let me leave it as theta, then that'll give me the opposite side, which will be that. So we need to think about a way to express theta We've been told that um, this is the uh, second order maximum. So we are using constructive interference. M is going to be equal to 2. So for theta, this is what we can say. Theta is equal to, imagine solving this whole thing for uh, sine of theta. That would be M or 2 times lambda divided by D. And if you leave it there, you don't have theta. You have sine theta. So you have to put this through arc sine to get an angular quantity. So we say um, plug that in for theta that uh, makes this equation hold. So y1, which is going to be the opposite side. Oh, wait, I already wrote that down. So it'll be 2.4 times tangent of arc sine of 2 lambda over d and so on. Again, there's a trick to simplify this into an algebraic form by using something called um, uh, the technique called the drawing the triangle, but I'm just going to, again, lean on the calculator. So let's calculate y1. So y1 is going to be 
uh, 2.4 times tangent of arc sine of uh, 2 times lambda. That would be um, uh, for y1, that'll be the shorter wavelength, 464 nanometer, divided by d, uh, which is uh, d is not <laughs> this separation, it's uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, this separation which I'm given as 0 0.5 millimeter divided by 0 0.5 millimeter um, and so 2.4 times tangent of all that times delta y delta y? no, sorry um, the way I've written delta y is confusing me I don't think that's part of the expression uh, delta y uh, so y1 is uh, 2.4 meters, oh, oh, so I should actually say 2.4 meters, that was going to confuse me, 2.4 meters times tangent of arc sine of, yeah, I think that's all good. So let's uh, put that in and see what we get. So Y1, oh wait, I missed something. 2.4 meters Japanese tons I don't get it um, oh I think that that's, uh, uh, there's some sort of um, thing that it's confu being confused for so all, when you're using Wolfram Alpha always check to make sure that Wolfram Alpha understood you correctly uh, there it is yeah 2.4 meters times tangent of arc sine of all that stuff uh, so that's uh, do I have an answer in uh, millimeters? I have the answer in 0 0.445, now centimeters. So that's going to be um, 0 0.445 millimeter. Now the thing to be careful of is it didn't ask for the position Y1. It didn't ask for position Y2. It asked for the difference. So let me calculate the Y2 also, and that will allow me to take the difference. So for Y2, everything stays the same, except for the wavelength, which is now 686 nanometers. Then, the Y2, according to this formula, is going to be, so let me uh, look at the centimeter version of it, 0 0.66 centimeter. So in terms of uh, millimeters, that should be, I feel like, did I make a mistake earlier? Let me just double check something. Um, so previously here, I had a 0 0.445 centimeter. Um, yeah, uh, let me do it this way, sorry, uh, I'm tired. Um, so let me just write this as centimeter. Let me take the difference first, and then I will convert centimeter to millimeter, because I'm making too many mistakes that have to do with the, the metric prefix. So let me write down in centimeter first. It's going to be 0 0.66 centimeter. Now you can see you have these two numbers that are comparable size to each other. And what you need is their difference for this delta y. So their difference will be 0 0.66 minus 0 0.445. Um, so delta y is equal to um, 0 0.215 centimeter, which converting that to millimeter, I think that's a 2.15 millimeter factor of 10 difference. So let me put that in and let's hope that <laughs> I got it right because if it's wrong, as I say uh, before, it will be embarrassing. Okay, good, it's right. All right, we got one more question in this set. Let's uh, go get it. The last question in this set I'm gonna do together. So the interference pattern of a helium neon laser light of this wavelength passing through two slits, this distance apart, is projected on a screen 11.2 meters away. Determine the distance between the adjacent bright fringes. Okay, um, so what you are looking at is adjacent bright fringes. So that would look like, let me see. So I think you can imagine doing that. Uh, let's keep the terms Y1 and Y2. So, or um, it's more like actually YM and YM plus what? The two bit, two adjacent bright fringes. So we can write down um, 
that um, from the consideration of this triangle as before, that YM is equal to the tangent of the angle times the adjacent, uh, which is you know, this thing. So 2.4 meter times tangent of the theta. Um, and theta can be again written from the interference conditions. We are talking about the, uh, oh, just the adjacent. So let's say um, theta is given from there. Uh, D sine theta is equal to m lambda. We're solving for theta. It should be arc sine of theta is equal to arc sine of uh, m lambda over d. So I can plug this in here. Let's see. We are given. Oh wait, wait. We are not given m. So. Uh, y m plus 1 will be this deal, uh, 2.4 meters tangent of theta m, tangent of theta m plus 1. And when you go through um, the whole same thing that we did, did, then this will be theta m is equal to that. And theta m plus 1 will be arc sine of... Um, m plus 1 lambda over d. So um, in some sense, it doesn't quite um, resolve your issue of these um, parameters being um, a bit hard to access. It's a, um, you have to highlight it. Um, it's, a, you know, inside the, the inverse trig function. So how do you uh, assemble an expression so that if you calculate uh, theta or you know something that's related to uh, theta m plus one minus theta m, there's some kind of a uh, uh, concrete number there because right now it looks like it'll depend on m, so um, it won't um, do it. So what I would encourage you to use here is the small angle approximation. If you use small angle approximation. So um, these are three different approximate expressions kind of encapsulate small angle approximation. When you have sine of theta, that's approximately equal to theta. And in fact, that's also approximately equal to tangent theta. Uh, it comes from mainly the fact that uh, sine of theta um, is approximate to theta if a theta is much less than one radian. And uh, cosine of theta is approximately equal to one, or if you need it, plus uh, theta squared over two factorial. Uh, again, if a theta is much less than one. So, so with the cosine theta, let's say we are keeping just the first term, one then um, what tangent theta becomes is tangent theta is approximately equal to sine theta, you know, sine over cosine, but cosine is 1, which is approximately equal to theta. So there's a lot of expressions you can simplify here. This tangent of theta business, you can just get rid of the tangent. Um, just to uh, make sure all the angular quantities are in basic, in, in the radian unit. So instead of being 2.4 meters times tangent of theta m, it can be 2.4 meters times just the theta m by itself. And you need the expression for theta m, uh, which will come from here. So since the sine is approximately equal to angle, arc sine doesn't really do anything. So we can say theta m is equal to m lambda over d, theta m plus 1 is this. So let's see if we can plug it in. Um, so so take, let's take a look at, as an example, uh, YM. So YM will be 2.4 meters times theta M, which is going to be, uh, oh, I have to be careful. This is a meters, this is a variable N, <laughs> times lambda over D. Let's uh, write down the same expression for YM plus 1 and see how we can proceed from there. So... y m plus 1 
is equal to 2.4 meters. Again, don't confuse the meter with the m. Uh, that's going to be here. So times m plus 1 times lambda over d. This is where I begin to see hope. Imagine taking the difference, delta y, which will be y m plus 1 minus y m. These two expressions are so similar. The only difference being this, plus 1. So when you take the difference, this 2.4 meter times m lambda over d, that's just going to cancel this out. So as you take the difference, all you will get is this term that is different between the two. So it will be 2.4 meters times 1 lambda over d. That will give you the delta y. So let's do the calculation and see where that stands. Uh, so we have uh, 2.4 meters times 1 lambda. Uh, so it will be just wavelength 632.9 nanometer divided by the separation between two slits 0 0.039 millimeter. Screen some um, distance away. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, the 2.4 meters, that's wrong. Um, I don't, this is what happens when you reuse the drawings and don't update your numbers. The number, um, they gave us 11.2 meters away. So this should be 11.2 meters, uh, which, um, you know, these should have been 11.2, 11.2. So this should be 11.2. So let me change the 2.4 into 11.2. Okay, I think that's everything. Let's see what we get. Uh, we get 182 millimeters or 0 0.182 meters. Yeah, seems reasonable. Let's give that a try. Yeah, so that's, uh, uh, that's the last of the four questions. Um, all, all the questions using, I guess I didn't get to use any destructive interference, just the constructive interference, just applying it in different situations. I do recommend that you draw the pictures to make sure you kind of understood what the question is asking and um, kind of learn to do certain things. So they didn't tell you to use a small angle approximation, but from the numbers that they gave you, you could tell, oh, this is probably going to be small angle, uh, like 0.182 meter compared to 11.2 meters. That's kind of small. So, and, and but that check, by the way, is something that you should do at the end. You know, in the process of doing this calculation, I had to use small angle approximation. So, uh, you, at the end of the calculation, you should double check that 0.182 on the opposite side uh, with the 11.2 meters on the adjacent side. Yes, that does give you a small angle. Um, in radians is something like um, 0 0.01 maybe, like 1%, uh, 0 0.01 radian, that's a small angle, um, I think. <laughs> Not quite 0 0.01, maybe 0 0.02. Um,